All right, so I will open up the December 6, 2017 Board of Selectmen meeting for the town of Lakeville. The entire board is present. No one is in attendance. Our first order of business is to happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> is to uh, continue our tax rate classification hearing. We received new information from our assessors relative to that. This number has been certified by DOR. Um, we have a motion somewhere, don't we? It's on number one. Be, be, be. Let me just, you still carried the estimated single tax rate as incorrect in that statement above that, just so you know. Go ahead. Yep. So where, where is, is the... Uh, the Lakeville Board of Selectmen votes in accordance well, that's not a motion. Now that's, that what we read? that's what you did, yes. The stating. I move that the Lakeville Board of Selectmen vote in accordance with MGL Chapter 40, Section 56, as amended. The percentage of local tax levy which will be borne by each class of real and personal property relative to, this, to setting the fiscal year 18, 2018 tax rates and set the residential factor at 1.0 with the corresponding CIP shift of 1.0 pending approval of the town's annual tax recap by the Massachusetts <coughs> Department of Revenue. That's my motion. And I'll second that. All right, any discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries, it's unanimous. Our second order of business is to revisit the 40R application to the DHCD. Is it trying to reach there? <laughs> yeah. There we go. All right. So, at our last meeting on, on November 30th, we talked about this a little bit. We were hoping to get some density numbers from Bob's attorney. And then we have some emails that went back and forth about all of this stuff. Um, you have some information, yes. new info all on this, right? Yes. If I may, Mr. Chair, um, the town council did receive um, the layout of Bob's project on the last page, but I guess there's been some miscommunication. Um, and when I look at, at it, I don't see the three or four story unit over 55. So I don't know if his... Um right, this is the 40B plan, um, but if he were to do a 40R, he'd have a, uh, an apartment building instead of the lot D stuff, I think is what yeah. he said. So that's this piece up here. Right. Would be replaced with an apartment building. Like a, an affordable apartment building, I think for over 55, I think is the intention. I don't really want to speak for him, but that was my understanding. Because um, I guess he talked to you well, today, John. Well, right, right. My discussion was obviously prior to this letter because I had Bob's attorney talk to Amy today. And certainly there's, there's various bonuses. There's a density bonus, there's an incentive bonus. Is the 40B credit for the number of units, and I think we we're talking somewhat apples and oranges. So where we left it is Bob and I were dealing somewhat through his attorney, through Amy, just getting feedback. Amy's suggestion at the end of the day was we should all get together to make sure we are addressing the density bonuses, the incentive bonuses, and not talking about credits for 40B housing against inventories and talking about uh, a density bonus versus an incentive bonus. So her suggestion was is she's happy to meet with us all as a group. Mm -hmm. She's happy to meet with our designee Mitzi Hollenbeck. No. <laughs> or, or any way that we want to do that. But there's, there's 
the, the miscommunication is uh, she wanted the density requirements of certain things. Density is one thing. There's incentive bonuses, and I want to make sure that we are able to try to maximize what the town gets for both of those categories. I'm still not, of course, now the builder gave Amy the plan, I think. It's but, on the third page, right, John. Right, which I'm not going to read through it now because I just received it. But I want to make sure that we're talking about all the appropriate bonuses and that the two attorneys, our attorney, Bob's attorney, and Bob is there to make sure all the questions are asked in the single room. Yeah, I think that would be helpful in terms of just putting it all so we all hear the same thing at the same time. Right, 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 not yeah. bits and pieces. Of, right. right, and that way it's both attorneys so are there. So if, if you'd like, well. they can come before the board and we, and we have them at one of our board meetings and hopefully we're, we're, I'm just out to address the density and, and incentive bonuses, not the 40B inventory of houses. It's going to count for that anyways. Do you think they could come to that meeting that we have on the 15th? Which uh, is a daytime. Well, I really think that's up to Bob's attorney and Amy. I don't have that day is bad for me. It's a Friday. I don't okay. have a whole lot of time that day. I have two closings, so okay. I'm going to be working, goofing off at the town hall, and working again. Okay. So never mind. So so. Um, what, what, but here's here's the question: Is this less dense than what the current stuff would allow? If we mm -hmm. just extended, this is less dense than. 200 apartments, correct? Well, the first point is we don't know the developable land, okay? He's got the drainage. That's a calculation you have to come up with on the acreage of the developable land. And no, no, I know, but I guess my point is, is that that's all we need to know, really. If this is less dense than what exists, then we're not concerned about changing the density because we know what he's putting on there. Right. The only place where it would matter would be the parking lot. Do we want to have or allow as dense of a development on that parking we, lot as what's already... We said we weren't going to do the parking lot. All right, so the parking lot's off the table? Yeah. Yes. That's what we had mentioned okay, the last right. time was that we're not talking about the parking lot. All we're right. concerned we're about is just making about sure this, that this, development this isn't restrictive. And, right. And to answer your question, I, I don't have that answer. I'd rather ask. Amy that true but I think that if what? you look at this I think the answer is obviously it's less dense I would think I would think versus an apartment right. house that but, goes up but that's all we want to know is it less dense if it is then we don't necessarily need to do anything with the density assuming that he's going to build this well, this product I unless you want to mold the density to fit well, this so we can only build this. Well, the only question I think I mean, would I guess be... the question is what's more likely to pass a town meeting? Well, I think, though, that the issue at hand is does this, as written with the existing 40R, would it even remotely qualify for a density bonus? The answer is probably no, because it's less dense. It can be, though. Right, exactly. It can be. But you still don't qualify for the density bonus. Right. No, so, I get it. And right. if I don't qualify for the then density why bonus, then why, the why am I even going to change it? Exactly. That, that's kind of my... Like, if I'm not going to get 3,000... And trust me, without yep. going back looking at my notes, yep. okay, I, I can't address something without going back looking at the notes, if you will. But I think it but all if we're counts. not going to get $3,000 a unit, then it doesn't make any difference how it's owned. Yep. So... Right. Yeah. All right, so we'll get those guys in the room and we'll so talk through do all Do we this qualify stuff. for this, this, and this? If we don't, why the hell are we yeah, why bother? trying to do a 40R if you're really not building? Right, we were about to scrap it at the last time anyways, but I think what we want to make sure is that a 40B, then we qualify for the number of affordable units for our subsidized housing inventory on the 40R, you know, do we lose the ability that if it's under 40R that it doesn't qualify for the 40B? I don't know if that's no, I don't, it's I, still the affordability. No, I, I, piece, I think so it all still do it. Right. That that answer I think is becomes a regular right, 40B. And I think the more uh, times you ask the question, the more times you get a different answer. I kind of from believe the that too. That we ask the question. Of. Right. That's why I would want them in the same I, room. Exactly. It, and that, same room. And honestly, because I, we're talking 
Credits. Credits for what? 40B affordable housing? I don't really care. I just want to know, is, is just, there a benefit to the town to yes. even bother doing a 40R that's overlay I, or leave it alone? That's all I want to know. So here's a proposal on the table that's going in to DHCD right. anyways. Right. That's all I want to know. Agreed. Do you want me to try to <sighs> put them on first on the 20th? If, December 20th? If, if they're available, mm -hmm. yes. Maybe. If they're available. What do we have, we have Verizon? Seth Pickering will be a quick. Uh, What's he from again? Green Communities. He wants to do a special in, presentation. In, in the Energy Board's going to be invited, obviously. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you just put them in wherever. Yeah. 6:45. Okay. <clears throat> um, December when? 20th. 20th. Is your next meeting? If you want to come early, we have a CDC meeting right before that. Oh, hang on. Let me write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, okay, number three, request to rescind letter of non-opposition for natural remedies. All right, Jeff Barton of Natural Remedies has ceased its application efforts as a registered marijuana dispensary. Womp, womp, womp. At least he contacted us and told us, right? The plus. It's rare. So we have issued three different letters. Uh, he's just looking for rescinding two of them, or or is that? I think all. Just not. He we, just wants them all off we, the table. We updated one of them, so the last letter we updated was that last one that dated May first because they decided that they wanted to do both dispensary and cultivation at three ten. So if yep. you remember, we had that like modification to the first letter so it's really just two active letters that exist yep. one on harding street and the other on they've decided to well. invest in bitcoins instead with the money <laughs> that's what they're gonna do that marijuana is old everybody's doing bitcoin now so <clears throat> so all right so i move that we rescind the all all letters to natural remedies all uh Letters of non-opposition. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Gone. All right. Renewal of annual agreements for towns utilizing the Lakeville Animal Shelter. We have 10 towns that board their dogs in Lakeville. And of those 10, seven have voted to continue their contracts with Lakeville. And I'm assuming those are the same contracts that I signed before the meeting. So with that said, I will make a motion that we approve the contracts with the Cushnet, Berkeley, Bridgewater, Carver, East Bridgewater, Freetown, and Rochester. I'll second that. Are and, we okay? Any discussion? Uh, yes. Yeah. With yes. the term to expire. I just want to know, um, that we're okay with the fees, you know, that the animal control officer has, you know, gone through them because I know I yes. had a conversation with him about surrenders and issues like that. It doesn't seem to be on these contracts. So um, where if someone took a dog in and then they decide they want to bring it back, I guess, from the town, they were spending more money in getting the dog neutered than what they actually were getting the adoption fee. Uh, maybe that has nothing to do with these town agreements anyways, but I just want to, like, he's okay with these. Yes, I he is. Yeah. Right. It really is. Because right. we checked with him on which ones he would want to, and he, he thought of changing it, and then he called me back and said, no, keep it the way it is. What were the thoughts of changing it? The, the questions I have is the date, expiration date, the new expiration would be December 31, 2018. Yeah. And then did the other three towns that didn't return it, did we contact them and they said they're not interested? No, um, I believe they had later selectman meetings, so if they just right, haven't gotten right. They so, haven't gotten so, so I think they'll be back. Yeah, maybe. okay. Yeah. I know. Okay. okay. David's very happy with Wareham. That agreement has yeah, worked out very well. Yeah, I think these towns well. are very, right. very they, they happy may come to back. use us yeah. as right. a resource. They may come back. Yeah, okay. it's just a matter of timing, yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. He was, David was thinking about um, it's when someone goes to pick up their dog, making them pay in the other town, which is what they 
was supposed to do. He wanted, he called Tracy and I to talk about maybe changing that arrangement, but he's worked it out with the community, so. Okay. And we did raise the adoption fee, so it's covering the spay or neutering, the chip, um, all right, the shots. Right, but that's for us adopting. That's right. not for taking two different issues. This is just renewing, we're stirring your dog here. I was told tonight by my youngest daughter that we have to get dog and cat food and squeaky toys because they're doing a food drive for the animal shelter in her kindergarten class. Yeah, they always do that. Do that. Yeah. They always yeah. do that. Yeah. Very generous. Yep. Good stuff. Um, all right, yeah, so these would expire on December 31, 2018. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. It's unanimous. Review and vote to renew annual liquor licenses. Everybody did what they were supposed to. So we have 15 liquor licenses up for renewal. We have all the information we need. This would be for January 1 through December 31, 2018. Uh, I move that we approve the following. Paul F. Grasso, DBO, Tuto. Does any do Grasso's? Italian grocery. Grasso's. But I think, I don't think they changed it. Did Tuto Italiano change the name? It's a different name. It's a different name on the building. Not on the liquor license. Yes. Not on the liquor license. Yep. Okay. okay. <clears throat> uh, Gulf Resources. These are for package store wine and malt. Package store all alcohol. This is the gold standard of liquor licenses. licenses. This is the Savas Liquors Inc. BBP Inc. DBA Muckies, Tamrac Wine and Spirits Inc. Avar Liquors Inc. DBA Star Liquor Market. Uh, and that is it. Restaurant All Alcohol. Hawaii Corporation DBA Orchid of Hawaii. Pequoy Brook Golf Club LLC, DBA Pequoy Brook Pub, mouthful. Lakeville Golf Club Inc., LeBaron Operating Company LLC, DBA LeBaron Hills Country Club, The Back Nine Club Inc., Baldi's Pizzeria Inc., Club All Alcohol, the Lakeville Area Number uh, 3994, DBA Fraternal Order of the Eagles Inc. General On Premises Wine and Malt, Lakeville Virtual Entertainment Group Inc. General On Premises All Alcohol Ick Beverages, the Bartending Service of New England LLC. That's my motion. I'll second that. Okay. With, with discussion. I thought Seasons Gas Station got one for beer and wine. They did not. They came before us. They canceled they, it. They did. Their, okay. Um, the manager that they had, um, there was an issue with him, so they didn't go forward. Okay. There's, I knew they came to us. Does, does the description on the actual license itself make a big difference because the Pacoy one hasn't been updated for what he has done for the inside of his business? No, we, we don't care about that. No. We can't change the intent. It mattered. <laughs> the intent. I'll go with the, the intent. Um, description on the license unless the applicant comes in for a revision on the license premise. Okay. Right. All right. Just, well, do, do we ask like Frank if he's had problems with any of these? I assume he would have come to us. Okay. No. Okay. And and I do monitor the um, DUI reports. We get those on a quarterly basis, and we haven't had any issues with that either. Okay. All right. Town rolls up and goes to bed about 9 o'clock anyways. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. It's unanimous. Number six, Nate Darling is hoping that we will appoint James Aguiar Jr. as an assistant board of health agent. We received a memo from him. <coughs> uh, dated November 27, 
2017, I would like to respectfully ask that the Board of Selectmen appoint James Aguiar Jr. as Assistant Board of Health Agent for the Town of Lakeville, contingent upon successfully satisfying the town's pre-hiring requirements. And then he goes on to explain that when we hired Kevin Bernardo, it created a, a vacancy because he was played this role for the town, and that uh, the fit the. And then he talks about the financial aspects of all this stuff. Does anybody have any questions about this? There's nobody here to answer them. I move that we appoint James Aguiar, Jr. as Assistant Board of Health Agent. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. It's unanimous. Agenda item number seven. We have an, a water connection application from Mark Knox, MJK Holdings for 303 Kenneth Welch Drive. So he wants to hook up his new building to water in the industrial park. Uh, it's a good idea to award it because he's already built a building. So. It would be, yeah. safe, it'd be <laughs> safe to let him hook up. Yeah. He could probably put it in a well if he wanted to, but I think, uh, you know. <laughs> this is a better is, idea. Yeah. Being that Taunton is right there, and um, I, I think that it is a good idea. So I move that we approve the requested application for connection to the city of Taunton Water. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. It's unanimous. Agenda item number eight. We received an email from Senator, State Senator, if you will, Mike Rodericks. <clears throat> Dear local municipal officials, in advance of the Senate's consideration for capital improvements, Bond Bill H. 4018, an act providing for capital facility repairs and improvements for the Commonwealth, I would respectfully ask for your assistance in identifying capital projects that you would like to see prioritized for inclusion in the upcoming bond bill. My priorities are going to be your priorities in deliberations of this bill. Therefore, please send me your priority project requests to my legislative director. So, what do we want to is, is this something he asks for every year? No, not typically. And I wasn't quite sure if we could <clears throat> ask him to increase the Chapter 90 uh, oh, right. bond. I mean, right. I mean, roads are our number one. I you mean, know. you could do a town hall plan. You could do Rhode Island Road Route 79 that's in the abyss. It's, well, that's gonna, already on the t Oh, um, yeah, it's on the, the tip. We won't do that road. Ever. Before you retire, so <laughs> it's on there. It's not on a list that has any merit. But I don't understand what this really is. We saying, oh, well, we'll do a $2 million addition of the town hall. Does that mean he's going to fund it? What? I don't understand what he's asking. No, I think, I mean, I probably could say something about the rotary. But that's you know, what I if thought. Yeah. To, or like adding a lane on Route 44 or like something to help with. That is your town infrastructure projects. You know, I aside from doing Route 79, yeah, 79. And, and giving more money to Chapter 90, put a light in at Bridge Street. <laughs> really? I mean, we could in road. anticipation of right? yeah. Light at Bridge Street, 79, rotary money, um, and more Chapter 90 and money. Chapter 90 money. Those yeah. are really big. I'll check with Jeremy. Jeremy? Check with Jeremy. Uh, Spittle. Why don't you check with Jeremy? I'm sorry, Jer his Jeremy. <laughs> Spittle. Yeah. Um, Jeremy spoken. I, I don't even know what it what it's being asked to Jeremy do. Jeremy really Spittle. And mm -hmm. No, I agree. I don't know. What I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know yeah, why. Is. I guess the first question is why, why are they asking? <laughs> they never asked before. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, well, are, we, are, they, now. are they giving right. us no strings attached money? Let's make up a list. But we're I don't think they're going to do we're that. We're inherently suspicious I mean, when the, they ask us. One right? of the things that was talked about before, which, you know, I don't want to make your blood boil, was the whole the dam issue and dredging the Namaskid and blah, 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 which 
that fell apart, and I'm not. It's not a. Well, that's a surprise that fell apart. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't seen a meeting on that for a while. Not on our um, panel. So tear it down. Not on my watch. All right, no. number nine. <coughs> Let's discuss the IT director position. Reader is going to update us on a conversation she had with Tim Graybars regarding the IT director position. Norm, and um, tell I tell us what's going on. Well, Tim was concerned to be the director for the whole <coughs> town for the eight uh, to twelve hours that you know he would fall short on that. Uh, but the two chiefs, the fire chief and the police chief, would like to bring him on as um, their IT for those two departments. Um, Phil has been helping us with the transfer of the assessors over here and keep Phil on through DynTech uh, and let Tim get exposed to the whole town network. Uh, that's what, how I would like to move forward with this, if it was okay with the board. It, did, wasn't this part of the original plan anyways? I mean, I guess maybe I, I, guess I, don't I thought I was idea. remembering that it was, we were going to hire somebody for police and fire. Do it. And then we also were looking to have somebody that would be the person who would do the rest of the town departments. And that way, and this is supposed to be under the direction of John Barker, who's here like an hour a week or whatever mm -hmm. he is, that we were going to reduce Phil's position because of this and reduce our, re our reliance on DynTech. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't seem to be the way that this is, I mean, I guess this is step one, but I mean, that was a conversation we had probably like seven, eight months ago, well, at least. In, and so I don't when I when I asked the board to approve the job description in September, I was hoping it would be the transition for the whole town. This would be somebody who would do the entire town. Eventually, but, right. So I would have to. But didn't we already have a conversation though about the the because this this job description is for the town one, not yes. for the one that we had already talked about, which was the police and fire. So I, I kind see, of see. I don't remember the, the part of just doing police and fire right now. We but. definitely had that conversation because okay. I'm pretty sure that that was especially because it doesn't state any of that in here. And when we went through the this job description, it does talk about you know all it was was when it mentioned the police station, and I'm pretty sure I remember that conversation of saying that it didn't include the police and fire piece. That's a separate piece. Mm -hmm. This was just the relocation of the servers that were, you know, we we're going to move over to um, the new police the station. New police station. So I, I feel like we had this conversation a while ago, and it probably was like July, where I thought we were looking to hire someone just for police and fire, and then this was the separate part of it. And it looks like this job hasn't been filled. No. Nope. So is this, are we advertising for this still, this part-time IT director? I did. And you didn't get anybody? Um, well, Tim was interested in it, and um, I, Phil was going to apply. I didn't get an application from him, but. Um, did, did we not do a job description for the police and fire piece? No. This, does, I did, see, this was my intent that this person would do everything. I don't and remember I, that being that conversation, but I don't know if anybody <laughs> else remembers that. I remember we're supposed to get together with John Barker, and we haven't done yeah. that yet. <clears throat> I think what we need is we need to review the yep. plan. Yep. And I think we need, if, if you can just bullet point out this stuff, like gray bars, police and fire, in an, you know, an expected time frame on that. I mean, I guess that would be indefinite. Mm -hmm. But then what's the timeline on Phil? And what's the solution for IT for the rest of the town, according to John Barker's plan? And then what's the budget impact on all of this and, stuff? I mean, that's really what I'm concerned about. Well, and, and what has John Barker been doing? Because the last time when we did meet with him, he said that he... I mean, did we just not no, he's bring him back on? No, off the planet. Like, what's yeah. his role then? Well, so. I don't know. You're, we haven't even so talked. We, so we got an IT think. strategic plan from mm -hmm. him, but now right. we don't have anybody to execute it. Because that was supposed to be his job, was to do the execution of it and using Phil, but then reducing Phil and right. bringing on somebody else. So we're not, we're well, kind of... We're rudderless. In, in, well, in... John's, he had listed everything that we, we 
our backup was never tested. He had a list of things. We didn't have an inventory. And he worked with Phil to finish everything that needed to be done um, and gave me the budgets for the next few years. But John's contract has run out um, back in October. Through October, uh, he worked with Phil, um, but he's been indisposed. Um, okay, so do we yeah. need, is this even the right job description then, now? I mean. We don't know, that's why we need Rita to just do a little research, yeah. get us that, get us that plan and just do some analysis of it and determine what the next step is. I mean, I think maybe this doesn't conform to that, but we don't. I don't think any of us really know. I think we were relying on a consultant that we are no longer under contract uh, with. Well, we we were hope. I was hoping with this to fill the whole uh, right, project. Right, that's in and, right. and meeting with Tim too. A lot right. of what we keep on us, you know, would be hosting. Uh, hosted what uh, I'm, I'm not sure of the term but hosting it in the cloud yep. and not uh, which is um, very time saving for the town right you don't buy your own service yep. but but we get that but if if Tim is the special to specialist with police and fire I have no objection to hiring him part-time yeah but we don't have a plan for right, an IT director, the whole and, and I'm not so sure I need one. I was wishy-washy on it anyways because we didn't get who you wanted. So you're mm -hmm. back to ground zero. You either get a consultant to help us hire that person, right. and if the guy isn't under contract, well, he isn't going to come in here anyways. And he seemed, he seemed to be knowledgeable as far as when we got together with him, but that right. was so long ago. Right. right. And, and he did the plan. We don't have time. Or the desire to go back and reinvent the wheel. So it's either through a, I don't. It's either through a consultant who advises us, and the hiring process. One of us would be on that committee, if you will. But if police and fire need someone, I don't object to having him support them. They do. I mean, especially with the we construction of the police station, yeah. we definitely need a body. Yeah. We should to manage that. So that we know, they know. I mean, all of the stuff's being set up in there for the yeah. entire town. My, so. my my suggestion is we get this guy part time, yeah, and then figure out what yeah. we're going to do. Can, with I guess an IT director. what would be helpful is probably to go back to through the agendas and find when we discussed it and just look at the yeah. minutes and see, you know, what happened. Well, I, I know we're going to have. We're they thought have we hired this guy. I, for, I thought we hired the police right, and fire guy. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. It doesn't make any difference. Yeah. I think we should hire him. I think <coughs> okay, we should. I would, yeah. uh, we did uh, vote to hire yeah. him. Yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm going to make a motion okay. that we hire Tim Graybars as a part-time IT position to support the police and fire for a, I'll, I'll say, a maximum of 12 hours a week. Again. That's it. I'm not going <laughs> to say eight. I'm, don't. If he, can he do it in 12? That's well, he'll yes also no. going to be consulting with the new police station, so some weeks might go uh, 12 over 12. hours a week. Okay, if all right. If you can do 12 hours a week as an average, I'm all set. Okay. I'm all set. And then we need to go and back. And we already established the rate and everything like that. Yes. I think we did all that. Yeah. yeah. It's all set. Okay. Right. I'll, I'll yeah. second it again. Yes. <laughs> all right. Yes. All those in favor. Aye. 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 <laughs> all right. Agenda item number 10, vote to sign the bond anticipation note, Dan, renewal. Here it is, folks, the renewal for the pumper truck with equipment for fire de the fire department in the amount of $440,000. I did find out the low bidder um, was Cape Cod 5. When I did the agenda Monday, I didn't have this information. Yep. All right, Cape Cod Five Cents Savings Bank was awarded the bid at 1.35%. So I move to approve and sign the bond anticipation note ban in the amount of $444,000 for various purposes to be issued on December 19th, 2017 and due July 13, 2018, payable to Cape Cod Five Cents Savings Bank with an interest rate of 1.35%. Second that. 
Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And that will come due with all our other bands on it. July 13th. Yep, right. it was. The motion carries, it's unanimous. Uh, number 11, discuss and vote to a point. Discuss and vote to appoint the town coordinator as selectman's designee to the regional district's negotiating committee. The regional school district is in the <coughs> midst of negotiating a teacher's contract of which the outcome will impact, well, the outcome will impact us indefinitely, but it's uh, a three-year contract, so they're in the middle of dealing with that now. Um, do we want to appoint Lorraine as a designee so that she may attend if Mitzi is unable to? I, I, so thought, I thought we had done that. If we need a vote, we should do the we, vote. But I still want the vote of the agreement to right. be in Mitzi's hands advising us through, right. through, through Lorraine. Well, I think, you know, one of the, the big issues that kind of came up is the fact that, you know, the last meeting which wasn't the one that was original like at the last regional fincom meeting there was a discussion of when the next meeting with the executive session negotiation would be which then i put into the calendar and then the night before a different meeting a tuesday night when all of a sudden we have a meeting on the following wednesday they say they're going to have a conversation about the so we quickly realize that there's going to be a lot of times when there's going to be a conflict between having a meeting here and when we're going to have you know when they've decided or they've got some new information that they're going to bring to executive session so they did send out a list of what they anticipate to be additional meetings yep. um, you know where they'll have executive session yep. yet at the same time I think that's pretty subject to change considering the last time when they had mentioned there was going to be one that was there you know if there's something that happens in between uh, they haven't scheduled out their negotiation committee meetings out through maybe they have you know I, I have no idea through March but I would say that it's pretty subject to change and I would like to um, vote Lorraine in as an alternate in the event that I can't go yes not to change her as the designee yes but to have her be an alternate um, yep. if I can't go yep so we're going to amend that to the Board of Selectmen's alternate designate slash designate. Okay. Yep. That's the motion. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We are selling an assessor's building. And we're moving them here. So to do that, <laughs> um, we need to know what the plan is for the town hall. Well, uh, Nate didn't uh, finish working on the budget. Um, he's looking at phasing it, and right now he's around forty to fifty thousand to make the alterations that are in the plan. But I can update you on. Is that the the plan uh, in terms of the the footprint, or I should say, the design that he that yes, we received yes. last time? Yeah. Did you have a chance to look at that? Uh, I looked at that, and Tommy Robinson, I think Nate, I think Nate is indicating Tommy Robinson would be doing it, I think. It, Did well, it got, seem reasonable to you in terms of the yeah. use of space and everything? Yeah. It, it, it was all the electricity, all, all of right. everything that would be entailed. Right. So quickly tonight, Nate's been trying to get it done all day, and he right. just I, got I tied up. Keep yeah. on it. I yeah. don't we should put it on. The, we should put we, it on the next agenda and get an update. Every single agenda until yeah, this until is done because resolved. this is right. um, still not the, the result I want to see, and it's six months late. So we got to have a plan. We got to have an idea of the. We have to know what it's going to cost. We have to know that there's a plan in place, and we have to have it calendared so that it can happen. Um, because that building is, is going to be sold in three weeks, mm. pretty much. So I have um, rented a star storage pod for the assessors. Uh, will be delivered on Friday. I've hired um, a meeting out over there tomorrow with McDonald Movers to bring over the file cabinets and take apart those desks um, for December 18th. Um, 
Shredder was supposed to be there tomorrow at noon. Highway was going to move everything down. That's been rescheduled for Monday, which I was available. Um, and one other th and Tom, uh, Tom right. is coming in. Start in here on Friday when no one's Friday afternoon, he's going to do the half door and a small counter for them. Which only lets uh, them go in that room, obviously. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but what I don't want to happen is they move in there and then nothing else happens. Well, the the phasing <clears throat> part of it, how what Nate has looked at that. is the first part would <laughs> be to build this wall and work on where the assessors will go first. That would be the first plan, and then get the treasurer collector in that room, uh, and we'll move Tracy up here during the transition. Um, he just didn't have time to yeah, show you the whole right. phasing. But that's great. Yep. We'll add it to the next agenda. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about that agenda item? No. Keep it on there. Like All right. Uh, January 10th and 24th. February 7th and 21st. What do those dates have in common? They're proposed selectmen meetings. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> I'd like to change most of them. <laughs> <laughs> Go right ahead. Um, can we do January 3rd and 17th? You have my key. I don't know. I don't have my new calendar yet. Oh. Can we? Yeah. We have them delivered. Wow. I hope I have one. LOL. I'm still yeah. on you know why? May. Because you can hide the stuff under it. No. Oh, I'm, I'm on the right I month. I only got, I'm down. I you got the one page. With all your notes. It's just no, I don't really don't need them. Don't touch my calendar. I'm good. No, I'm good. <laughs> don't touch my stuff. I can go through and get rid of it. January 3rd and 10th. 3rd and 17th. 17th. And February, and what would you like to February, do? I don't want you to miss Valentine's Day. There's a regional Day. fin cost, These supposedly. These Sundays. I think yeah. that's what I had originally. That's why I don't want them. Um, and then that... So, I'm not sure what the, there's a regional FinCom meeting supposedly February 7th. I'm not sure if that's happening or not. We can keep the 7th and the 21st, I'm okay with that. And we can just communicate to them that, like, I'm fine with it. I just wanted to put that out. Yeah, there. I don't care when they are. Okay, so 7 I'm and also, 21 we'll, we'll work around your schedule so because three and you're gainfully employed. Oh wait, when's the, um, oh never mind. I was thinking of the MMA convention, but that's on a Friday. Yeah, it's the week mm -hmm. of the but 17th. I, I don't know that we want. I, I don't know that we want you to skip that regional. Well, it, it's supposed I mean, to going, be on the first Thursday of the month. And the, so and I don't know why it's on the first Wednesday. Oh. Well. You know what I mean? Like it's a weird. All right. I'm not all sure right. why it's there. Okay. Good. Why it's not, not on the usual schedule. Want to just resolve that maybe tomorrow night? Yeah, <laughs> I can resolve that. We can Do put it, it down night. for now. Do the seventh and. How's the 21st? 21st is fine. But but resolve that maybe tomorrow. 21st is school vacation week. Um, doesn't matter. Uh, we thought of that and we didn't know if that would. No, I have to work forever. <sighs> it's tax season. That's the only problem. It's like hunting season. Yeah, and it's not even about taxes. That's the worst part. It's just called that. So that's fine. And then January 3rd. I have a dentist appointment at 4 o'clock, so that'll be fun. Uh, 17th. Those are the dates I picked at first, but then I thought with Christmas and all that, maybe you'd want a break in between. Nope. No break. All right, human calendar, you got them in there? Sorry, I have to put them down in a visual uh, pattern or else I can't uh, remember it as a human calendar. There, now I've seen it. It's etched in my brain. Okay. Good. <clears throat> hmm. All right. We have some meeting minutes. From October, no, August 1, September 6, September 13, September 27, October 4th, 
October 11th and November 13th of 2017. Can anybody read them? Well, I, I got read them. We need to like schedule one. Do. Look, look what I got slightly excited about that it said the IT strategic plan update, but it didn't really have anything. It just said have the yeah. plan ready to go and the vendor picked out by September 30th, 2017. Which we're right on top of that. I don't know what that means. But the bottom of that paragraph, page two, I don't even know what it means when it says the state dispenses the funds depending upon the number of applications they receive with the IT plan, which the highway department will eventually move into. The stormwater management plan should be updated. I don't know what that has to do no, with the IT plan. He was talking plan. about his uh, grant for the, uh, the culvert. On so why does it say the IT plan? That's what I didn't understand because I oh, scanned through that. Let's see which one are you on. Okay, and then he, the Jeremy September went back with the IT August plan. August 1st. <laughs> that was with um, that was a the GIS. Thing. You yeah. said, listen, why are we doing this? To change the law. Yeah, I just don't understand and it when I reread it. Going, so and and Nate and I are saying, why are we spending any money oh, on this? There it is. They won't enact it. To five years after Rita. <laughs> as long as it's after. Yeah. I don't care how many years. But th that's what that's what that was about. Was the stormwater? I think uh, mapping. I think. And I think this was our last uh, prior, you know, your priority list meeting. We were trying to have quarterly meetings. I move that we recommend the uh, meeting minutes. Do you accept it as is? Well, no, I mean, if she, she want, if she's going <coughs> to revise them, then... I don't even know what it was, and I don't really care, honestly. Like, it doesn't, Missy. it just doesn't make any sense to me when I read it back. Usually I can understand what we were talking about right. there, but I don't even know what that means. But right, I think it had to do with... The people GIS, that people part GIS, of the IT, which... Stormwater management, we didn't want to do it. We didn't want to do it. But he's because done. Not only at the once they enact and cleaning it, it's and it doesn't take if, effect if for years. If people understand what it says, that's totally well, fine. I, with I think me. that's what it is. Okay, good. Yes. I'm good with that. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 New business. Did he? Oh, okay. That's all. No, no, no. Has anybody heard from Joan Menard lately? Yes, I have. Well, as a matter of fact, I have too. Wow. That's amazing. She texted me on Sunday as if I would call somebody on Sunday. She texted me on Friday and then texted me again over the weekend and I said I will respond to your text during working hours. Uh, well, well, she called me on Monday. I called her on Monday. If I can just update you first, <laughs> Paul Raffron came to me and said that Senator Menard wanted to meet with me first and maybe one selectman, <laughs> and I told so him. So he's involved in the one that she's involved mm -hmm. in. Okay, because remember, Tracy, when we were trying to figure out, Yeah. and I said, why do they want to come in if they don't want anything? I do want something. So I told Paul that the board of selectmen has the policy that they're not going to on these. What was the p piece of property? He, they were looking at two. Um, T.L. Edwards, yeah. <laughs> Edwards at the end of the, the intersection zone. and over the Lakeville Nursery property. Well, okay, all right. right. The T.L. Edwards obviously is, is that industrial? Yes, it is, but it's in a residential area. But that's, well, that doesn't matter if it's zoned industrial, but it's just, right. just a terrible spot. Right. It's not near the highway, it's out in the middle of nowhere. Right, and the nursery is not properly zoned. Right. Right. But Which, everything around it is zoned in But right, that's yeah. actually an ideal it's spot. It's a good spot. Oh, right. we, we love it out there. I think that's where it all belongs. So we could, I think, at the at the town meeting, unrelated to marijuana, we should probably change that zoning for there to be industrial. Now, could someone like Market Basket still go in there? It can still be a if lesser it was function. An overlay, right? Yeah. So, so if it was an I think, industrial I think, overlay, I think that's an important parcel, Aaron. To no, I to, think that that's maybe not get a bad that idea. Changed. I Unrelated to the marijuana yeah. right. people, we'd like a business or an industrial or marijuana to be out there. Center can go in. Um, I think that came up before. Well, can what, what go in there? Shopping go in an industrial. I don't. What I tried I'm to explain sure. to her was that 
changing zoning is very difficult. Ideally, they should find property that is not doesn't need to be changed, but that um, you know Nate could really explain what <laughs> what's allowed and what zoning, um, and that I don't meet outside of this board. So I'm not going to sit down with anybody and have a meeting with somebody without you all hearing the same exact conversation. I watched how Alan Frawley got kind of painted in that light with the DOT, and that was right. a state agency. So I'm not even going right. to entertain that idea with, with a private individual or a private company right. looking to do whatever they want to do. We, and I explained this to her, and I think it's we have a consistent, reasonable approach to how we, we've been dealing with, with this issue, in my opinion. And I invited her to have a meeting with us. Um, she was reluctant to want to just jump right in and have a meeting. That's her issue. I, I don't know what else to say other than that's the process. We're a public body. We meet in public. We all hear the same information. We all share in that dialogue so that we can all be on the same page. We might not all agree, but we all should have the opportunity to have the same um, conversation relative to, to anything that we may be deciding on. So that's really where I left it with her. Um, and I'm hoping that if, if they are serious that, that they resurface and they you know, actually take the time to come in and see that we don't bite and that we're reasonable people and um, right. you know, not to say I'm going to go out and champion a zoning change for them, but it may, it, it's the first step, right. you know, right. um, is sitting down and, and meeting in public. I'd like to try to move that zoning change as an overlay, an overlay at the proper term for that area anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an ideal spot for it. No, never mind marijuana. I mean, if some business, if some industrial wanted to go in there, the other side of the road's industrial. It's not spot zoning. I think it should be changed, anyways. Yeah, I mean, the conversation I had with her is just that she needs to speak to the zoning enforcement officer, you know, and contact right. the office for that. But right, that's so like we don't have a lot of industrial area. I think we have the industrial park. We have a couple of little spots on Crooked Lane, which. Uh, of minuscule, they're not big. Right. Yes. Yeah, so they're not good, big yeah. enough to support anything. The Derek Maxi. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the CDC's first uh, map that we used at um, the Lakeville Arts and Music Festival, where we covered it in plexiglass and had people create mm -hmm. their own Lakeville by putting like color forms essentially mm -hmm. on there. Pawn shop. <laughs> <It was> <laughs> now we'd have to upgrade it with uh, red, marijuana the, leaves. The red one in the very top, Aaron, I think, is the Lakeville <laughs> business park up there. Yeah, for whatever reason, right. in, in the nursery. side is all business, <coughs> and the other side, the other is, side is all industrial. So this is so this is the business side. Yeah. Right. Yes, left is in business, right's industrial. So we should really change and the left to be industrial. What is the I adult think. entertainment district? Is that the in. industrial portion of that area, or does the adult entertainment district also include the business portion up there? I don't know how it I, well, Do you see where that is, Aaron? What's it's that zone that adult? It's just in the industrial side. Movie yeah. theater, as we call it. That's all industrial. OK. So the left side, I think, should become industrial anyways. As well. As well. It, with an overlay? If that's the right term, yes, I think so. I, I, Unrelated to marijuana, what were you going to say? I, you can't I don't have think retail, retail industrial. I don't think you can have retail. Well, no, we just told these Let's, guys, all these marijuana guys, they can open a retail spot. Water. We're going to because yeah, the state's going to come and say, well, well, well you like have medical standard, marijuana, yeah, you, you can have a retail permit separate permit door. Yeah, but They're going to say that. Anyways. They're going to say that. They're going to override your, your right. district there. Don't drive. <laughs> Do you think that's the way that's going to go, Mitzi? What's that? Yeah. If you have a, a medical. Yes, that's what they've been saying is yeah. pretty much it, yeah. it's part of the special permit. So how do they the override our zone? Special zoning? permit. They, they, special they do. Permit. They do. Uh, they it's do? local special permit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Only with certain things, though. See, right. retails and but that's Well, they, we they'll say, you know, the marijuana people will want it to be where we've zoned the adult marijuana. Adult bookstore, adult motion picture theater. 
special permit industrial. Industrial, but retail is there, and there's our registered. So we would have to. You see, allow registered marijuana dispensary as defined by MGL, but which. I think, Aaron, part of that, not Search having a retail labs. in an industrial is probably a mistake. Let's say the Talbots wanted to have an outlet there. That would prevent them. If they were in industrial. They are in industrial. They're in the, right. in the they're, business they're park. They're in the business park. Yeah. So yep. I think that the retail should be allowed. In industrial. In or industrial. Business. I think so. To support that business, or like that, a cash and carry that exists no, for you don't. The medical, the marijuana people, of course, can do it. The, they're going right, to do it. Right, they're allowed to. But what about but someone like a Talbots, which hasn't come before us? But that happens a lot of places that manufacture stuff. Uh, yeah, like a, that's like Christmas, a cash Christmas, and carry. Christmas tree shop, as an example. The last gas. The, they, dying, they, uh, that corporation. Is that industrial, do you think, Aaron, where the Middleborough Industrial Park is? They might have different uses. Oh, wait a minute. Industrial. Um, do you think that's Large industrial? Large-scale retail building. You see, you can industrial. go in, I think, right. and you can yes. buy stuff. It there says a lot large of wait a minute. Large-scale retail building is industrial. Yeah, under the... That's okay. Yes. Then that's okay. Special so permit in business. business. But that says large-scale retail building well, 30, with 35,000 or more square feet. feet. But is that the whole building, or is that just the retail portion? Well, it's got to be the whole but building. But any other right. kind of retail in a industrial needs a special permit. But it can be. That's okay. Yeah, permit. you told me okay. it couldn't be. I knew there yeah, was something. Get, no, they can get I knew there was that's something about retail. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, as long as I can get it, that's okay. Yeah. I don't. I can't remember anything, so if I don't have that in front of me, I have no idea yeah. what the zoning is. But, but I think that we really talked about trying to push companies up there right and I think we'll find that the Lakeville nursery is just business zoned and and uh, it probably should be zoned business for a little bit more right I think you have a shot of people going in there all right well you know hopefully they'll uh, want to talk to us then all right, so that was my new business thing. Old business is an update from Rita regarding a letter to uh, Karen Polito for the MBTA solar canopy, canopy fixes in project. Well, I tried to call her first, uh, and they put me on, you could talk to a strategic... Uh, a robot? A constituent. <laughs> Constituent uh, aid service. So I waited, yes, and then. What is your name? Constituent uh, aid. So then it said, if you want to leave a message, you know, hit one. I hit one. Vo voice voicemails full. So I. Can <laughs> this is the lieutenant it's, governor's office. This is like calling the IRS. It's like the same thing. So then I. I I'm not home right now, but you can leave a message. <laughs> Sorry, the mailbox is full. So then I, um, I did take advantage of their email, but you can't attach anything. <clears throat> Uh, such as the letter to the governor or whatever, and I just told that's her who not, I was. That's not the avenue we need. That's not so going I, anywhere. Uh, right, right. So, in, and in the meantime, I FedExed her a letter saying how disappointed okay. the Board of so Selectmen was. So maybe we'll was. get a nice letter from But I'm not sure I got a two. For a Christmas wreath. Right after that email, an hour or two later, Rick Colon calls me from Mass well, DOT. I, I was on the f I was texting with Mike Rodericks. Mm -hmm. Well, I called him, and then he sent me a text saying he was about to board a plane. He was coming back, and I said, "Well, I just wanted to talk about the letter to Baker and the solar project." And then he texted back, and he said, "I'll have Rick Colon call you." It's like that's not what I want, <laughs> but that's right, fine. Right. And then he got on a plane, and I couldn't right. get any so, through to him so, anymore. Somehow, maybe the next step is. We, we carbon copy Mike and Keiko on these. Maybe we ought to. We did on those letters. Maybe we ought to say to them, this, it, can, you deliver the, can you deliver these to these people? Can you get us a meeting and an audience to someone? Well, I think Other than the Department of Transportation. No, I asked for a meeting. Uh, yeah, I think that's with the but, problem. But I think Keiko, Keiko and Mike are our only in mm -hmm. at the State House. <laughs> We're not going to get in Let's there. Get Pacheco involved. We're not going <laughs> to get in there. That's your suggestion. <laughs> He yells. That's his thing. Uh, somehow we need to drag those two into it, and uh, maybe you could just put a call into them again and say, listen, this is just bullshit. We're not going to keep going around. 
can you right. get someone to take this seriously? Right. This is like if Rick Colon, nice guy and all, but he's he's he comes down to, to basically tell us there's nothing you can do. This is happening, and then he's the guy that we have to then ask, what can we do to not have this happen? Is the guy that told us that there's nothing right. we can do? It's, it's like when you it ask, like, sense. I want to speak to your supervisor. Right. 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 And right. you get Rick Cologne. Right. <laughs> right. 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 And Mike Rodericks clearly said to me, if you people of Lakeville do not want the solar canopies, you're not going to get them. So how do we get those two right. involved? Exactly. If they want a I letter tried. to Cologne. say, uh, hey, Cologne. you know, Cologne. they can take our letters and deliver and them to Karen Cologne. Polito and... And a million of them. Governor Baker. <laughs> I, I, but yeah. I don't even know if the if the if the well right if if Charlie Baker or Karen Polito is the answer, but yeah. Mike and Keiko should know whether that's the answer. Right. And, it, and, and Rick Colon is just not the answer. Right. Right. Yeah. We need to get this. And I sort of told him that. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Right. When, right. when I thought he was right. Jeremy right. Spittle, right. I'm telling him, but yeah. My, right. But Mike and Mike and Keiko, even though Mitzi and Aaron. We'll, we'll do something on on their own. Let's just have yep. Rita chase Absolutely. those two right. down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, totally. Tell us what to do. We're, we're, right. we're not getting we're, any we're straight saying, answers. We're, we're being told multiple things from state agencies of we're, close, we're not closing the station, we're closing the station. We have to hear it from other meetings in other towns. And we just want to actually speak to somebody that may be able to actually have some influence over the decision because exactly. exactly. we're getting very frustrated exactly. here exactly. without anybody actually listening to us exactly right and that's what our representatives I mean, right. are there for uh, is to, do, and I think they, to take care of these I think, issues right for us. right Keiko's out of town until after the first of the year I think but really but oh, Michael yeah. can do it Michael's the Michael can do it <clears throat> and, yep. and I'll do that has offered his services but Let's hold them to it. Mm -hmm. All right. Do we have any other business? In the read file, I do. But, but okay. Yep. Just just the uh, historical commission regarding Massachusetts preservation project fund grant program. We, we don't. Can can we apply for that? We don't have a CPA agreement, but the historical has always given us capital oh. projects that we never do what they apply for this goes back to well, not having a historical district well our historical commission will guy. apply but, but I talk about apply through someone like Serpa to someone someone that writes the grants doesn't matter okay the money then, goes then if there's nothing to do why do we have it here do you think well we that it's let like us know that we can't do anything he's bold. Well, no it comes addressed to the board of selectmen oh, well, so throw it away then yeah so let's go to this you can't do something with it <laughs> But we do, if we had a historic there. district. We don't hey, have one. You never know. We don't have one. But it's a very short one. It's the Sampson Cemetery, the <laughs> old townhouse, <laughs> and the historic <laughs> library. No. That would make, um, and we'd you be want eligible to do for it, grants. Do it. Yeah. 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 No, tell the, to apply. But I, I was offering yeah. Sherpa to someone. You, you have their services available. The better at yeah. grant writing than, than most of everyone else. But in that case, it's no, the money name. goes to the That's ones like that have graphic. historic districts. Yeah. You don't have to well, have the CPA. Okay. 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 Yep. Is that a Beatles cover band? I don't know. You'd say inspired oh. by. Oh, no. So I think we're going into executive session. Yes. I move we enter executive session. Pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, specifically the teacher's contract, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the board, of which we have no bargaining position. And the chair so declares, I suppose so, and pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, for the purpose of discussing, discussing strategy with respect to litigation in the matter of Trockey v. Lakeville et al., Superior, Plymouth Superior Court, CA, 
number 1783CV00700. Holding the meeting in open session would have a detrimental effect on the litigation position in the chair so declares, which I do, and pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A7. To comply with the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 22F, approval of executive session minutes for November 1, November 8, 2017, and not to come back into open session. So help me God. <laughs> <laughs> you Mouthful. can't just say you're going into executive <laughs> session, no? no? Okay. I know it. I'll second that if we're seconding them. All right. Powderly? Aye. Burke? Aye. And Hollenbeck? Aye. 